Grandiosity is a beautiful but dangerous thing. On one hand, it can compel us to put forward our best foot and get us to unleash this arousing wave of determination and enthusiasm towards a grand vision that we have. But on the other hand, it can also impair our perception towards reality and worst of all, get us to make critical mistakes that should've and could've easily be avoided if we weren't so deludedly adamant about our intentions and actions. Having ambitions is excellent. In fact, you need to, otherwise you will lack certainty in any form of direction that you take in your life. However, having too much stupendously opulent ambitions can actually backfire on you big time. Let's face it, whether we're just starting out or already riding on a momentous wave of progress, we all know that awe-inspiring feeling that we get when we laid out all of our grand possibilities on the table. We relish in that extravagant and flamboyant sensation of visualizing the moment when all of our dreams and ideals manifest themselves into reality. We picture conquering endless amounts of endeavors, excelling significantly in all of them to the point where there are seemingly no worries of possible obstructions like a king of sort, or even a god destined for great things. Like I mentioned before, while this grandiose visualization is necessary, there comes a point where your majestic imaginativeness could escalate so ostentatiously that it shrouds you from the finite and bounded reality that you are made of. All of us have our own absolute natural limits. We all have a definitive ceiling of where our capabilities and capacities could reach. However, because we rarely or even ever explore the vicinity that precedes that ceiling, we become exhilaratingly enamored to engage in the thoughts of an all-encompassing and gloriously escalated version of ourselves, especially when we gain progress and momentum in our work. We feel like we can do everything and conquer everything that we encounter. We feel like we have the touch of gold and the proportions of Atlas. We feel like we have 10 brains, a thousand arms, and a million legs, which in fact, we absolutely don't. So why is it that being overambitious can severely punish us for our own false pretense? Well firstly, juggling between too many ventures could leave you becoming inconsistent and unfocused. Trying to pursue lots of endeavors or campaigns all at once will inevitably divide your time, attention and commitment ambiguously. And the further and deeper you go within your works, the more energy they will require from you. Thus, your work capacity is always preoccupied and being chaotically split between extensively various different forms of tasks that the required amount of time for you to actually focus and commit in order to create significant impact within your work is practically insufficient, insignificant or even non-existent. And by the time you ran out of energy, virtually little or no actual progress have been made and now you have literally very little or no work capable of being done which will eventually result in a train of diminishing returns to all of your endeavors as your exhaustion will massively hamper the quality of your efforts. Now I know all of you young lions are hungry for glory and territory and want to just take that massive jump to reap everything in your path, especially in the beginning of your campaign or at the start of your journey. However, taking a leap of faith does not mean that you charge at the battlefield being high as a hooligan, delusional as Disney and blind as a bat. You always, always want to have a vivid idea of what you're getting yourself into. Going outside of your comfort zone does not mean that you should do it with complete absence of game plan, knowledge and familiarity. Always try to select just one or a few endeavors that you have the most confidence in or at least have a vivid plan of venturing and committing into. Of course, ideally, you want to start with just one venture first. Secondly, having or handling more things will result in having or handling more problems. This one is probably the main issue that most of us turn our backs on when we are daydreaming about our eventual glory days. A simple one to spot, but because it's so simple, we virtually don't see it. We only think about all the possible rewards from our work and have little to no desire to think about managing or enduring the problems that can arise from the work especially after we relish ourselves in the reward. Reaching towards rewards or reaping within rewards does not mean the absence of issues or the end to issues. Work is all about continuous problem solving and the more work we have means more different types of problems for us to solve. And with your limited capacity to handle all the stress and pressure on your own, the end result will be the same. An eventual partial or total collapse of progress and or existence of your ventures. And I can already sense the main argument coming. Why don't you get people to join you to help you manage all those problems? At least you won't have your hands completely full. A very good point at that. And of course, it is something that we should eventually do. 
However, have you ever considered the amount of time, resources and effort that it can take to hire, let alone find good people to join your organization? And who's to say that when you have people in your organization, you'll be entirely relieved from your problems? As the leader, you still have to keep constant eyes on your people. And for those who worked in the corporate industry, I don't have to mention the amount of conspiracies and backstabbing that can occur even among initially trusted individuals. The bigger and more expansive your organization gets, and the more and more people you have in it, the less amount of control you will eventually be left with. As you will need to fully rely on your people to manage those areas of endeavor that you can't handle anymore with your own commodities and work capacity. And again, who's to say that those individuals whom you've trusted to handle parts of your organization doesn't have different agendas of their own? It is much better to pursue growth through gradually refining your work rather than endlessly expanding your work, because you'll still have the complete observation or control over the quality and individuals within your organization while also maintaining integrity and progress. And thirdly, being obsessively deranged to reach too far will inevitably compromise your decision making. History have told us countless of times from the great Alexander to Napoleon to the man with a silly mustache that trying to push too far away into deep waters that you are extremely unfamiliar with or which magnitude you massively underestimate will cripple or even crumble everything that you've worked for. Why? Simple. It gets you to be critically and insufferably impatient, which inevitably will result in you being frivolously careless. Again, grandiosity can blind you through glorious imagination, which will inevitably entice your insatiable greed for glory. And that greed in particular will transform you into a reckless blunt instrument. Fearless, but foolish. Admirable, but absurd. Your momentum of progress and success will further mislead your confidence into biting off more than you can chew. Taking risks is one thing, but taking uncalculated risks presents greater tendencies to desperately cut corners, expend unnecessary amounts of resources, and jump at the most seductive of opportunities without taking into consideration all the possible consequences. Luck is maybe your only friend, but like a friend, they can also be fickle. And when it decides to not be on your side when you need it the most, despite your adamant plead, expect the absolute worst to befall you. Thank you for watching.